again. Ev oh, there we go. Thank you. Uh, thanks for joining us, everyone. I know, especially at this time of year, it's really a, a hectic time. So we really, really appreciate you taking some time out. I uh, just want to welcome everyone on behalf of the team and welcome you to Leading to Bring STEM to Life. This is our uh, first PLN in a series of professional development series uh, that will be coming forward uh, to support administrators uh, with the new elementary science and technology curriculum. Uh, my name is Jennifer Vieira. I am a principal uh, with the Dufferin Peel Catholic District School Board, also a member of CPCO. This is a collaborative uh, project between uh, CPCO, OPC, ADFO, and the Ministry of Education. So I would like to uh, welcome my partners uh, today. I'm joined by Erica Gillespie. She's a principal at the Waterloo District School Board, uh, also a member of OPC and presenting with us today. And also we're thrilled to have Lisa Cole. She is the Director of Programming of the K2I program at York University, uh, our expert panel today. So thank you, Lisa, for joining us. And also in the background, we have Brad Harris today, our project coordinator, uh, our, our tech guru for us today as well. Uh, thank you for supporting us uh, virtually. And uh, Lawrence Demayer also in the background today. He is the project lead for OPC. And Luciana Cardarelli from uh, CPCO, the project lead there. Uh, she had to send her regrets today, but uh, has worked really closely with us on this project as well. Well, so thank you everyone so much for joining us. Looking forward to beginning today. And uh, we're gonna start off uh, with uh, our land acknowledgement and I'll pass it off to Lisa. Thank you so much, um, Jennifer. Uh, I'd like to start today uh, with a land acknowledgement. Um, I connect today myself uh, from the area known as Takaronto, an area that has been caretaken by the Anishinaabek Nation, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy and the Huron-Wendat. It is now home to many First Nations, Inuit and Métis communities. I acknowledge the treaty holder, holders, the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nations. This territory is subject of the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Belt Covenant and agreement to peacefully share and care for the Great Lakes region. I also want to, you know, um, kind of reflect a little bit on the word Tecoronto. I'm connecting in from Toronto itself is a word that originates from the Mohawk word Tecoronto, meaning the place in the water where the trees are standing, which is said to refer to the wooden stakes that were once used as fishing weirs in the narrows of local river systems by the Haudenosaunee and Huron-Wendat. I recently learned about the Canning fish weirs situated just north of us here from Toronto. It's an engineered technology over 5,000 years old where people fished and gathered. So I want to recognize the Indigenous engineers and scientists that have long before resided, lived and continue to innovate today on these lands. Um, so I, I wanted to start today's conversation uh, recognizing that engineers have always been present on these lands. Sorry about that, I muted. Um, thank you very much, Lisa. And I would encourage anyone who's joining us today to drop into the chat the lands from which you are joining us uh, today as well. Uh, so we thought we'd just start off um, by setting the stage for our learning today. Um, today's PLN has been developed very much with a leadership lens in mind. So um, we're going to engage in some learning conversations today that really focus on the important role specifically of the administrator in the implementation of the new science and technology curriculum. So um, we're going to do a little bit of reflecting right off the bat. Um, as the lead learner or one of the lead learners of your school, some of the important considerations uh, will include taking a look at the current local contact context for your staff right now. So I want you to do a little bit of thinking about your staff um, and think about what do the conditions for learning look like right now? Because some of uh, the answers to this question are going to help you make some decisions about how to move this learning forward. So it's just a few questions to think about. How has your staff been doing? So is your staff uh, a group that's, you know, been able to work through the pandemic conditions successfully? Uh, sorry, Brad, if you could go back one slide. <laughs> 
things. Um, have they been able to work through the conditions of the pandemic successfully? Um, are they now, you know, already engaging and learning conversations and it's starting to feel a little bit more uh, pre-COVID at your school? Or is your staff one that has really been struggling through the conditions of the pandemic? And um, they're right now just focused on staying afloat in the classroom. Um, the learning stance uh, of those two groups are two very different learning stances, and they will take two very different directions in terms of exploring uh, this new learning. So it's something I want you to think about as we go through uh, a number of slides and, and conversations and new information, thinking about the context of your staff and how you might want to uh, start to approach this work. Um, if you're uh, conditions at your school, for example, are one where you see yourself trying to reset the conditions again and beginning anew over the last couple of years. Uh, afterwards, I'm going to throw a couple of articles, a couple of monographs into the chat. Feel free to connect to them. Um, they're really great ones that have been out there for a while, but we they will definitely help in, try, in terms of trying to reconnect and re-engage our staff in that learning stance once again. Um, also, if something is brand new, uh, often we know this, we have lots of experience with this, but it can often be very overwhelming for many. It can be seen as yet another thing to do. Uh, so we want you again, throughout the presentation, think about what has your school already been working on? What are they already engaged in? Because if you can try to make some natural connections to the work you're already engaged in, that will definitely make it easier to find ways to engage in the learning of something new, such as the science and technology curriculum. Um, so some things I know uh, province-wide we're looking at, we're looking at a lot of pieces in mathematics. We just had a brand new curriculum. Uh, lots of equity learning happening. We're thinking about uh, literacy right now in terms of the, uh, the right to read uh, panel report. So there's a lot of different areas you may already be engaged in. So try to think about some uh, first steps for you and connections that you can make um, throughout this conversation. Uh, so always focusing on your local school context. Okay, so I'm going to pass off this. Uh, actually, I'm going to move us to the next slide. Sorry, just share some of our learning goals before I pass it off. So here's what we're looking at for today. So we're going to take a look at and understand why we need, need a new Ontario science and technology curriculum. We're going to explore some of the similarities and differences to our previous curriculum. We're going to develop some ideas to support first steps in implementation and some consideration for principles right now. We're at the end of June. So what do we need to think about right now? And what do we need to think about moving forward perhaps next year? And we're gonna engage in some learning conversations together in some small group breakout sessions uh, to share some ideas, some resources and make some connections to our current, current work, uh, gathering some feedback and next steps for one with one another. Okay, I'm gonna pass it off to Lisa. Perfect. So maybe a quick little introduction about uh, where I work. Uh, I'm actually a K-12 education um, uh, experienced teacher, classroom teacher. I used to teach physics and, and mathematics, uh, was a science department head, centrally assigned curriculum lead at one point, and also an education officer at the Ministry of Education for a period of, period of time before joining the Lausanne School of Engineering here at York University as the Director of Programming for K2I Academy. K2I stands for Kindergarten to Industry, and we're really focused on working with educators like yourself uh, and, and classroom teachers and youth to really bring STEM to life uh, in classrooms and also in uh, outside the classroom experiences. So that's kind of where I, I uh, work. Uh, so today, I, we thought we would start with a, a conversation around some of the, the numbers um, and some of the current stats uh, that we are working with in, in, our, in our Canadian context um, in STEM. So in Canada, only 17.9% of licensed engineers are women, and there are less than 5% women representation in many trades, including automotive service technician, electrician, and carpentry. So women only make up about 24.2% of enrollments in engineering programs in Canada with the highest proportions in biosystems, chemical engineering and geological engineering. Only 0.6% of undergraduate students enrolled in engineering programs in Canada identify as Indigenous peoples. And according to the 2016 census, only 71,365 Black Canadians, 25 years and older, had a post-secondary certificate diploma or degree in STEM. 
So Canada's population of 25 year olds and older is approximately 25 million, just so that you have a relative number there to, to think about. So in fact, 94% of black youth in Canada say that they would like to get a bachelor's degree or higher, but only 60% thought that they actually could. And you know, when we when when I look at Dr. Carl James. Uh, James's research that he did with the um, Toronto District School Board, he found that 53% of Black students were in academic programs in the Toronto District School Board compared to 80% of other racialized students and 81% of white students. In addition, he found that 43% of Black students in TDSB did not apply to any post-secondary programs compared to 26% of white students and 17% percent of other racialized students. So oftentimes we we think about, you know, um, these STEM pathways as being a, a leaky pipeline. It's often used as an analogy or, or a model to illustrate what's happening. And this illustration in this, in this slide actually focuses on women in engineering and often and is referencing physics as a key prerequisite course for university pathways into engineering. This metaphor itself is actually quite problematic as our students are not passively leaking out of our system. We, are, we, we have actually created a system that pumps and filters certain students out uh, with no possibility of reconnecting back into pathways oftentimes. So, so if we reframe this model, we may talk about pathways. However, at times I often wonder um, who's constructing these pathways and for whom, and are all pathways leading to, to, to some destination that is meaningful for students? I believe that a better model for us to consider in our design work together is to consider how we create an ecosystem where students can learn and discover interests in pursuit of their goals, where all students discover their role in this ecosystem and they all thrive. So this new curriculum is actually in response to this reframing that is needed in our schools. And, and in terms of you know, some, some other outcomes, there is a growing need for STEM skills in a variety of jobs today, and we anticipate a continued growing need. Approximately 70% of Canada's top, top jobs now require some level of STEM, yet most students opt out of STEM pathway courses in high school, before high school graduation. Between July and September of 2021, there were more than 330,000 unfilled jobs in Ontario, many of which are in the skilled trades. So there is actually a great opportunity for us to do some interesting work together to really change this narrative for our students. Our current pathway system requires students to complete elementary school, then move on to secondary school, and then they have three possible paths to skilled trades and apprenticeship programs or college or, or university programs. Students also navigate programs between as they start to in one place sometimes and change uh, over time. So you will hear students who might go to college and then pursue a university degree after. The K-12 education section, however, plays a very critical role as that, uh, so that we can provide the early exposure to this learning uh, so that students and families can make informed decisions about these pathways. Um, so I'd like to start here at looking at our K-12 Ontario education system, uh, just in terms of numbers. So in 2020-2021 school year, we have a total of about 22 million students, about 131,000 full-time equivalent teachers, and almost 7,700 administrators in, in Ontario. In 2020, if we look at basic qualifications um, in science and computer science, the numbers look like this, with more qualified in intermediate senior division than in junior intermediate divisions. So this data is readily available from historical statistics available on the OCT website, and uh, that's where I drew these numbers uh, from. So if we look at these, these numbers in comparison to um, the, and we ignore the complexity of what staffing really looks like in your schools. And we and we consider we don't consider French and English, and we just look at the total total numbers. The ratio of teacher to student is just not great. 
according to basic qualifications. And so I did take a look at um, the number of additional qualifications that, that teachers might pursue in science in particular, and it didn't even make the top 38 cues uh, on, our, on our list. So it is clear to, to us that in order to implement this curriculum, we're going to do, need to do more than simply recruit and hire qualified educators. And so this conversation is going to be really to equip our teachers with what they need uh, to, to implement this new curriculum. To begin, um, I do want to, uh, uh, you know, start from this place of what is technology. And technology is something that we as people create. And historically, um, a, a selected few have had the privilege of creating technologies for people. We know that better technologies are made when we, they are made with people and with diverse people. We must move towards creating diverse innovators, creating for people and the universe with people. And I say the universe here because we we know we're going back to Mars or to to the to the moon. There are lunar missions and we have this goal of reaching Mars. So our, our human footprint um, goes beyond our own Earth now. And so I often wonder about what that new future uh, might hold for us. So STEM skills Science and technology education is important for all of us. And I think during COVID and, and the pandemic, um, you know, the, the need to uh, understand the science and the math um, became really, really relevant. So without diverse creators and designers in STEM, we will continue to face challenges uh, in tackling some of these complex problems and designing technological solutions that are truly inclusive. Uh, racism and bias has always been a historical part of science uh, in the past, but also still continues to be today. So I am going to put in the chat, you know, some links to some interesting um, information that might, uh, that you might uh, find valuable in starting this conversation around um, racism and bias in technology. So I want to stop to kind of end this section by, by highlighting that curriculum does matter, that curriculum implementation matters too. Even the best curriculum makes no impact without implementation. As we think about our implementation planning for our schools, let's make sure that we are thinking about equity, diversity and inclusion and the pathways that connect to the new D-Stream grade nine science curriculum. So I, I, so I ask all of us to think about how science and technology is for everyone. STEM is not an after school club or a special event. It is a part of every student's learning. Science and technology education is not only for future scientists, but for all students to develop skills and knowledge that is important in today's society. Science and technology needs to do better than what we have created today. And we can do this if we create programs that are inclusive and equitable for learners, ensuring that we create culturally relevant programs that are responsive to student needs, uh, interests, and inclusive to different perspectives and curiosities. So let's create this opportunity for diverse learners together. And I'm really excited to engage in this conversation with you today. I'm going to pass it over to Erica. Thanks, Lisa. Uh, I really appreciate that the information and perspective that you've given us. Like it's really our why, right? So that's really important. Um, I'm here today to share some of the key uh, changes in the overview of the new curriculum. We will be going more in depth into those changes in future webinars. Um, but for today, we just wanted to give you a glance at the new curriculum online and let you think a little bit about what's that going to look like in your school and what do you need to share with teachers uh, maybe before school ends this year so that they can be prepared to be thinking about their planning and design of their programming for next year. 
So this is the focus statement that's in the current document. So I'd ask you to waterfall in the chat, just read that over to yourself. And if you could waterfall in the chat, what differences do you notice in this focus statement from what you might be seeing in your, cl in your classrooms in current practice right now, or maybe an augmentation of what you see in your current practice right now? Is there anything in here that, that stands out to you uh, as a little bit different? Maybe it's a word or a phrase. It's mostly a test to make sure that everybody's still there. Okay, I've got one, Jared, thank you. STEM skills, right? That tech concepts and moving away from the knowledge focus uh, that we see in a lot of our classrooms, absolutely. Some of those things were in the previous iteration, um, but you know, really highlighted in this. And yeah, the rapidly changing piece, I like that for sure. And that Elisa will talk more about that in the future as well. We've had some of these conversations already. Carolina, uh, sophisticated, interesting. Yep, for sure. So just to get our mind around what, what this is all about uh, was the reason that we wanted to bring this. If we could switch to the next slide, there is a, an overview document that appears on the website uh, for the new curriculum. And it lays out these eight areas as new learning or updates in the current curriculum. So we see that there's a bigger, uh, deeper STEM skills and connections piece. There is a focus on emerging technologies and practical applications. Uh, there's an incorporation of engineering design throughout the grade with really a practical application focus. Um, and problem solving and design and build. Uh, we also got that expectation that there's hands-on experiential learning happening in all of our classes. And really the focus is on sparking curiosity and wonder. Uh, indigenous knowledge and perspectives are highlighted and coding is connected through all the expectations. We also see food literacy appearing, connections to physical and mental health uh, around food, climate change is highlighted, and diverse lived experiences are a focus when we look at learning experience related to contributions in science and technology. So again, lots of these areas appeared in the previous cur uh, curriculum, but really something that's highlighted here and something that we know as administrators is sometimes overlooked in the planning, uh, as someone pointed out in the, the waterfall where the focus really has often been on that knowledge of science and curriculum over top of that um, more experiential learning and STEM learning. So, uh, when I think about this, I think about how do we help teachers to change current practice? Because what I've noticed uh, in the last few years, especially is in my classrooms, when I go cl do classroom visits, there's a lot of time on tech uh, in classroom. And we know that our kids are getting huge screen time numbers outside of the classroom as well. Um, and what we know is that Authentic, relevant, real world experience is what helps kids build meaning. It would, what helps them connect their learning to their lived experience. It's that rich learning that really sticks. Um, and that's for all students. As Lisa you know, showed us the data, the importance of reaching all of our students in a way that will really stick. Um, not th just those who can memorize the definitions or label the diagram or something like that. Uh, so we know that learning through doing, that trial and error, that supports that deeper thinking and critical uh, 21st century skills like critical thinking, creativity, collaboration, communication, citizenship. Kids don't get that with a video uh, or a uh, you know, an online lesson or a textbook, right? Or a black line master. I may be aging myself when I use that term. So what we wanna see in our classrooms is those real experiences. And that means that our planning as leaders needs to be about how do we uh, facilitate that? How do we support that with resources? And how do we support those teachers who may not have that background in science where it's not comfortable, where we really need to push it a little bit to get this happening. So in the next slide, uh, we're going to just take a minute 
uh, to take a peek at the new curriculum. And because we've talked a lot about hands-on learning and being able to experience, we're going to give you a little bit of an experience here and it's a challenge. Uh, I always feel like competition is a great uh, way to, uh, an impetus to us to participate. So I'm going to put a link in the chat in a second. And that link is to a Google form that's a bit of a contest. It's a, like a hunt and find with the new curriculum document. When you get to the last question, uh, there will be a clue that you will come back and put in the chat. And the first person to post that clue in the chat will win a big prize that Lisa is going to explain at the end. It's worth it. You're going to really want to do this. One tip in the Google form, I've given some hints. We don't have a lot of time tonight in our, in our schedule. We only have about five or 10 minutes for this activity. So to help you to find these items in the new curriculum, there's clues at the top of each question. So don't rush to try to get to the end and skip reading the question carefully because those clues will help you to get through quickly. Uh, Lisa and Jennifer tried this out for me and Lisa was trying to rush and she got stuck. She didn't have the clue. Uh, so make sure that you read the clues and that will help you. And the first clue is the link to the curriculum so that you can find it. So when I hit enter, you can do that. We'll be here with our microphones muted. So if you get stuck, you can come back and ask us a question, but there's only about five or six questions. Go as quickly as you can and a good luck. May the odds ever be in your favor. We're going to we're moving. Oh, there we go. All right. So we're just moving along. So basically, um, we've tried to just help, you know, dip your toe in the water a little bit at this very busy time of the year, just to get your head around some of the why behind the new science, take a look at some background, look at some of the new learning areas. So we've had a little bit of a, a sharing around some of those things. We want to have an opportunity now to actually do some real brainstorming in some small groups around some you know, immediate first steps or thinking about uh, what you have to think about right now. So uh, what we're gonna do uh, shortly is there are, uh, you're going to be moved into a breakout group and uh, each breakout room group is going to have access to the Miro, which Lisa's gonna put in the chat in a moment. Uh, Miro, in case you're wondering, is very similar to Padlet or Jamboard. It's a collaborative, you know, digital online whiteboard space that has some post-it notes, uh, always looking for new ways to engage our staff uh, using tech. Um, um, for professional learning. So it's, it's another new one to maybe expose you to. Uh, on the Padlet, you're going to see three questions that's going to focus the breakout discussion. Question number one, what do you need to accomplish before the end of the school year, specifically around this new science and technology curriculum? So what are the things that you need to think about, do, share, communicate, right now before you leave the school year? Second question, what is your short-term short goal for September? So what are those very beginning thinkings uh, and actions that you're going to be engaging in in September? And third question is, how will, how will you communicate, collaborate, and guide teachers? And we're hoping through the breakout that we'll be able to talk to one another and help each other with some ideas. So we'll ask you to add your ideas to the post-it notes in the Miro. Uh, afterwards, you'll be brought back into the main large group again, and we'll have a debrief with a few uh, end pieces before you head out. Okay. So Brad, when you're ready, uh, you'll see Brad will place you in a breakout group. And just looking at the time, uh, we have time for about two comments. So if there's anybody who would like to give a comment, if there was something that came out in your group um, that was a real highlight or something that you thought was a real aha to share with the bigger group, I'd invite uh, if you want to raise your hand or just unmute and speak up. We only have about one minute to debrief. This time has gone very quickly tonight. I was going to say, maybe I can add one for my group when we were focusing on question number one um, around what are we going to do right now. Definitely a common theme is about finding ways to to keep the calm because of the fact that there's a brand new curriculum cause it's causing a little bit of panic and some teachers, they have to get their head around new ideas. So we talked about, you know, communicating in a way that's helpful, that helps to bring the calm down. So, you know, and one example that came up was about, again, highlighting maybe some similarities, uh, some connections so that it's it's not feeling so threatening right now. Um, 
just as some ways of helping to keep the calm right now. In our group, we did talk a little bit about, uh, well, one thing that came out was how different boards have approached it, where some of us have really not even had exposure to the fact that there's a new curriculum, except for maybe me posting this uh, session in our principal group and other boards have had some really significant PD already and resources delivered to schools and those kind of things. Mm -hmm. So it really is an individual process. Um, and we talked a little bit about the importance of providing those resources for those hands-on activities, the consumables, those kind of things and figuring out. And one of the members in our group talked about having leads, a pro like a primary and a junior lead that can really help to facilitate that. People who are passionate about it to help share um, with each other and support each other. So I think we're out of time for our debrief, um, but we will, I think Lisa will be leaving this mural open uh, for a while. And I know our group had a little difficulty accessing, so I'll be putting our group's thoughts. I took some notes on the side and putting it in there and it'll be able, uh, you'll be able to access it and add to the content of that later as you're thinking about things tonight or tomorrow as well, if you wanna share in that way. And then I'll turn it over to Lisa to uh, share some resources at the end. Uh, so what we did was we actually compiled a, a Google Doc. Um, we thought we would leave it as a Google Doc so that as things evolve, we can continue to add. And we welcome you to also add as you come across interesting things. Uh, but if you open up this, I, maybe we'll put the link in the, in the chat as well for you. Um, if you open up the document, you'll see that uh, we've included links to um, the, the little activity we did, the scavenger hunt activity, uh, in case you wanted to use uh, that scavenger hunt in, in some work with your, with your staff. And then I've highlighted here some of the uh, resources that are currently being developed by certain organizations. So Ontario Science Centre will have resources, Science North, the Science Teachers Association of Ontario, Let's Talk Science, uh, Canada Learning Code also has some resources. Um, and I do know that they're still in the process of developing all of the resources, but as they become available, they will be posted on their site for, for download. Um, I do also wanna mention that the Science Teachers Association of Ontario does have a school-wide membership option. And I, if I remember correctly, the last time I checked, it was $50 to, for elementary schools to provide membership for all your staff. And um, all you would need to do is find sort of that lead person to be sort of the point of contact uh, for that membership. And then um, all your staff would have access to that, um, to that uh, uh, any of the resources that they have available, including health and safety, because um, we'll be moving into a lot of hands-on learning uh, through the new curriculum potentially. And so you'll be, need to be mindful of the health and safety protocols of your board, but also some of the recommendations that uh, STEO might provide for provincial standards as well. Um, all of the data that I shared earlier, I've also included links to where that data came from so that if you wanted to do a deeper dive into that data, uh, you have access to that. And then uh, it, earlier, um, I, I posted some of those links to some interesting uh, race, racism and bias um, in technology uh, elements. So I put the, the hot links to, to that as well. And I've also included my contact information at K2I in case you're you're wanting to reach out to see what we're up to. Uh, right now we are developing grade nine D-Stream science uh, resources for schools, but uh, we do also offer some supports for elementary schools uh, at times. And Jared, if you could please make sure you take down my contact information because you and I will need to con connect for the prize. And the link to the hunt and seek is in that chat, as Lisa mentioned, you're welcome to use it. It doesn't collect any emails or any personal information. So you can just use the same one. It won't matter to me if there's 2000 responses, uh, pass it to some friends if that's helpful. Uh, absolutely able to use that if that's something to introduce uh, at your staff meeting, get your teachers looking at the curriculum. I can't promise Lisa will give them all a prize though. 
<laughs> I wish I can, but our team is very lean. So I think can, we're going to. You could give them some packages of straws or popsicle sticks, things they're going to need, right? Uh, we could be pretty <laughs> not, creative. Not you, the principal, yeah. the principal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Lawrence, we're going to pass it over to you. Okay, uh, good afternoon, everyone. And uh, I just wanna thank you all for joining us this afternoon for some learning uh, regarding the leading the implementation of the new science and technology curriculum. I really wanna thank today's team for putting together this uh, learning opportunity. Uh, Jennifer, Erica, Lisa, and Brad, of course, who's always behind the scenes supporting the efforts. As mentioned, this is part of a series of learning opportunities that we are creating in collaboration with CPCO ADFO uh, and uh, supported by the Ministry uh, of Education. So uh, look forward to future events. Uh, you can mark September 27th in your calendar, which will be our next uh, session. Uh, we'll be hosting a webinar uh, to uh, further dive into the new curriculum and some strategies for leading its implementation. So again, thank you so much for um, joining us this afternoon. We hope you have a great evening and good luck with uh, supporting uh, this work. Take care. Bye, everyone. I still don't, I'm still not used to the quiet rooms. <laughs>